One father is more important than a hundred schoolmasters. George Herbert. Hey everyone. To all the fathers out there, whether your family is intact or was victimized and destroyed by feminism's war on men, marriage, and family values, happy Father's Day. This year for Father's Day, Breitbart reported that President Trump had the following message about fathers. He stated, Fathers across our country serve as role models for their children and families. Through their examples, they display the fundamental American values of hard work and dedication, which are so important to fulfilling our potential and achieving the American dream. Today and every day, we honor our fathers who serve their families with humble and giving hearts. Whether we became children through birth, adoption, or foster care, the incredible fathers in our lives generously share with us the powerful gifts of love and care through their presence and dedication. So, how did the left respond to Trump's words? Well, they read, of course. According to USA Today, progressives, feminists, and social justice warriors did probably the most hypocritical thing they've ever done. They launched the hashtag Father's Day of Action. According to the Washington Post, activists spent Father's Day drawing attention to a controversial new immigration policy that separates migrant children from their parents. The day that included congressional visits to detention centers, marches, and vigils was dubbed hashtag Father's Day of Action by activists on Twitter to highlight how some migrant children were forced to spend Father's Day apart from their parents. One group of Democratic members of Congress visited a U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement facility in Elizabeth, New Jersey, to speak with detained fathers who had been separated from their children. According to Slate.com, the Democrat group consisted of the following members of the U.S. House of Representatives from New Jersey and New York. Frank Pallone, Albio Osiris, Bill Pascrell, Gerald Nadler, Carolyn Maloney, Akeem Jeffries, and Adriano Espaliat. Apologize if I fucked up your last name. However, the grandstanding didn't stop there. They even put up a webpage, fathersdayofaction.org. Their webpage states, Make June 17, 2018 a hashtag Father's Day of Action. Honor Father's Day by helping families separated while seeking asylum in the United States. They even have a donation page sponsored by Act Blue Charities that has panhandling links begging for money. Further, they even have two bills before Congress. In the Senate, they have the Keep Families Together Act, and in the House, they have the Help Separated Children Act. This is a full court press to keep immigrant families together. It seems pretty noble, right? Wrong. For all their posturing and peacocking about wanting to keep families together, nothing could be further from the truth. You see, feminism's war on men, marriage, and family values has been waged for over a hundred years. Further, the social justice movement was, for all intents and purposes, created by feminism. At the head of every social justice organization sits a feminist. When it comes to marriage and family, feminists have stated, Since marriage constitutes slavery for women, it is clear that the women's movement must concentrate on attacking this institution. Freedom for women cannot be won without the abolition of marriage. The nuclear family must be destroyed. Whatever its ultimate meaning, the breakup of families is now an objectively revolutionary process. You see, at every turn, feminists and social justice warriors work to destroy men, marriages, and the families they create. If these politicians and activists truly cared about families, they'd do something to help the fathers left homeless after being divorce raped. They'd create programs to reduce male suicide, since suicide is definitely a gendered issue and the risk drastically increases after a relationship breakdown. They'd repeal the feminist laws created by the Duluth model and VAWA fraud that allows men and fathers to be legally witch-hunted and wrongfully found guilty of crimes in civil courts without ever being charged in a criminal court or having the ability to exercise their due process or other constitutional rights. They would stop incentivizing women to destroy their marriages and families 
while at the same time limiting a father's time with their children to an average of four days a month. And finally, if the government actually gave a shit about men and fathers, maybe they would make a menshealth.gov, you know, as a resource for men to go for help in much the same way women have womenshealth.gov. You see, feminists and social justice warriors don't give a shit about American fathers, or any fathers at all for that matter, because in reality, they hate all men, and feminism is a man-hating movement. Don't believe me? Enter feminist Susanna Danuta Walters. She's a professor of sociology and the director of the Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies Program at Northeastern University, and she's also the editor of the gender studies journal called Signs. She recently penned an article in the Washington Post in which she states, It seems logical to hate men. I can't lie. I've always had a soft spot for the radical feminist smackdown, for naming the problem in no uncertain terms. I've rankled at the, but we don't hate men, protestations of generations of would-be feminists. So, in this movement, here in the land of legislatively legitimated toxic masculinity, is it really so illogical to hate men? So, men, if you really are hashtag with us and would like us not to hate you, start with this. Lean out so we can actually just stand up without being beaten down. Pledge to vote for feminist women only. Don't run for office. Don't be in charge of anything. Step away from the power. We have every right to hate you. You have done us wrong. Hashtag because patriarchy. It is long past time to play hard for team feminism and win. Remember, this woman is a college professor. She is teaching generations of young men and women to be misandrist. Not only is she a man-hater, but this feminist scholar admits that feminism was never about equality. It was always about female supremacy and power. Now here's the thing. Imagine if someone had said it was acceptable to hate all people of a certain religion. What about if they said it was acceptable to hate all women? What about saying it should be okay to hate persons of color? Would the Washington Post endorse and publish these statements, or is it only misandry that's endorsed? But even so, there is a silver lining. By creating the Father's Day of Action and defending families, feminists and their social justice warrior psychophants are admitting that not only are fathers important, but intact families matter and are necessary for a civil society. And by doing this, these feminists and social justice warriors unknowingly just debunked the entire feminist ideology. So at the end of the day, everyone agrees even feminist bigots, that families are important. However, as long as feminists and social justice warriors remain unwilling to repair the generations of American families their bigoted ideology has destroyed, then they'll continue to have no credibility when they claim to care about families anywhere else in the world. If you've enjoyed this video, found it educational or insightful, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, both on YouTube and on bitshoot.com. And don't forget to hit the bell so that hopefully you'll be notified when I upload new content. However, the best way to ensure you don't miss any of my content is to periodically check my channel both on YouTube and on bitshoot.com. You can also follow me at misandrytoday.com, gab.ai, and minds.com, as well as support my work through Patreon. And don't forget to check out my sponsor, The Dollhouse. And in case I'm targeted by YouTube, I mirror all my content on BitChute. All the links are in the description. I'm DDJ, and this has been your dose of misandry today. Happy Father's Day.